Hello, Tracy here with another scrapbooking process video. Today I'm doing a double page, so make sure that you watch this one if you love those double page layouts because they're, they are much less common than the, than the single page layouts. So I'm starting here on my Canvas workspace, which is the software for cutting with my brother Scan and Cut. And as you can see, I just typed out the word whale and the font that I selected, it was just a font that was already installed on my computer. I use a Mac and I've never installed any special special fonts or anything. So one of the ones that must come with your Mac is called Big Fish. And I just, uh, as you can see, I typed it out and then I made it bigger just by dragging on one of the corners so that it filled almost all of a whole, the width of a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Now I am going to cut this out and if I had paid closer attention, I would have actually made the W be a little bit further away from the H. Uh, but it's it's okay. I wasn't realizing that I was going to use the negative. I thought I was going to use the letters here. So I'll show you what I did. I actually did increase the spacing between these letters just a little bit because the way that it was, uh, it, the W was going to actually cut over the H. So I just increased the character spacing to, to the, a level of two. And then as you can see, I just dragged it around a little bit to make it the shape and the size that I wanted it to be. And then I just hit send to my machine. And uh, this is the first time I've ever done this. So I had to just kind of read and see what it was I was doing. And then then I will grab a cutting mat. This is a brand new cutting mat. I haven't used it yet. Uh, my husband has been using my Scan and Cut for cutting leather and so I had to get a new mat because the, the mat I had been using was all filled with leather little bits and pieces from the backs of the leather. Uh, so I'm just going to load that mat into my machine and I do like to share my whole process, but uh, I will cut out some of this because I ended up having to cut it twice. But uh, that's just because I used textured paper and ended up changing my mind. But this is how the machine looks and it's very similar to other digital cutting machines that you might be familiar with. And I'm just taking the letters off of the mat now. And I'm going to just put the little overhead piece of uh, acetate over top of it just to keep it protected and clean and as you can see I have two of these because because that first one that I cut was on um it was on textured cardstock and I was planning to use the actual letters and cover them over with stickers and do like a collage type of thing and then use those collaged letters on a layout. But then once I got it on my desk, I thought I really liked the looks of using the negative space and have my sticker collage underneath of the, the cutouts where the letters belong. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the negative space. I just, I don't have a ton. I do have lots of whale stickers, but I don't I don't have enough to fully cover this whole area. So I just outlined the letters so that I could know where I need to concentrate these whales. I woke up in the middle of the night realizing that I have a lot of whale stickers and I have a whale layout to do because we went whale watching. So I had this idea in the middle of the night that I could collage all of these whale stickers. I believe all of these, if, if not most of them, all of them are from Four Bears Sticker Club. Some of them might be from Sticky Club. But uh, yeah, I, I think they're all from Four Bears, which is my favorite sticker club. I love getting stickers from her every month. It's so awesome. So I started, I did this a little bit backwards. I started putting my favorite whales down, but that means that my favorite whales ended up being buried among the other ones. So what I really should have done is put my less favorite whales all around the outside edges. If I was doing this again, I would have kind of gone into all those little serify areas, like the little edges of the W and the H and the A, um, and put all of the sparkly whales that I don't like as much all around those edges. And then I'd go in and put the nicer whales over top. Uh, but I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, so I was just doing the best that I could. So I'm trying to fill all of these air, all of this whole area up with whales. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of 
it's fun work. I really enjoy this. <laughs> it's a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Some of these whales have other things on them, like a hot air balloon or a little fishing town or that sort of thing. And I'm just making it so that those things are outside of the frame of where the cutout is going to be. I'm going to cut some of them up because it's becoming clear to me that I actually don't have enough whale stickers to fully cover this. And so I'm, I'm going to have to be pretty strategic in how I use these little bits and pieces of whales. So I'm just trying to put it, make it so that there aren't too many whale heads altogether. Like if I've got a head over there, then I'll try to put a tail beside it just so that it doesn't look too weird. But you know, it's, it's just a collage of stickers. It doesn't, you don't have to think too carefully about it. So as you can see every here and there, I'm actually pulling up the versions of the whales that I like better. And uh, look at that. It's looking good, isn't it? I like that. Uh, I'm sticking the sparkly ones, which I like less. And also, are these orcas, are, are, are those actually whales or is that a misnomer? They're killer whales, which I think are not actually whales. But anyhow, don't tell anybody because <laughs> we're calling these all whales. If you know what, if, if you know about whales, I'd love to hear um, whether those stickers that are on the center of my page right now, are these actually whales or are they something else? <laughs> I feel like I should Google it and I should know what I'm talking about before I make a video, but uh, I don't. So <laughs> uh, this is filling in quite nicely. I love these, all these different shades of blue. And there are a couple of other shades that are being pulled in there. Some of those whales have multicolors in them. And I really like how that's breaking up the blue. It's not just a cons a, a big, uh, a big block of of only blue. It adds some interest. So here's a fun fact: orcas, also known as killer whales, are marine mammals. They belong to the suborder of toothed whales, known as odontocetes but are also the largest member of the dolphin family. So there, they are whales. So I feel better about this already. I am going to spend a little bit of time trying to get these whales so that they cover all of the green. Basically, none of this green will show. It's just a random piece of cardstock for the background that is hopefully not going to show at all. There will be tiny little bits of it showing through, but that's all right. I'm glad that I chose green because it does blend in like it's an aqua y kind of watery green because it does blend in with the stickers in the few little spots that it does show. I wasn't exactly perfect at this and so there are a couple of little spots where the green shows through but it just looks like water in between the whales. Some of these stickers had whales just in the center of it. So I'm just cutting out the whales. I'm getting pretty desperate for whale stickers now. So I'm cutting out the little ones that I thought I'd pass on, but I'm actually going to use. <laughs> and even some of these fish are not whales. Some of them are sharks and other things, but if the tail looks whale-like enough, I'll, I'll take it. Now this one actually was a whale, so I'm going to use this, but I can't remember. Am I going to cut this? Oh, there you go. And I get so desperate that I actually end up using some animals from that other sticker sheet that aren't whales at all, but they, they could be whales. I just use the edges of them so you can't really tell what animal it was anyways. And you'll see me do that. So this is shaping up to look quite nice. I like it. It's quite a bit of work, but I, I think it's meaningful. This is a really meaningful layout for me. And so uh, I don't mind taking a bit of extra time to you know, do this more meaningful background. You could have totally put a piece of whale patterned paper behind there. That would have been fine. Uh, I'm just putting on some music for my real time folks who are watching my video in real time. What I do is uh, for my patrons, I broadcast 
real time versions of all of my process videos. And they get to kind of listen to me explain what I'm doing as I do it. Right now it's it's sped up for four times the speed for my actual process videos. And uh, there was a lot of, of just time that I wasn't talking. So I just put on some music so that they could uh, hear, listen to something other than just silence. <laughs> So there's only a few little gaps to fill in now and I'm almost done. I'm going to cut one more little whale out here just using my small scissors. It makes it a little bit easier to fussy cut. These are Cutter B by EK Success and they're good because they are non-stick scissors and so they're good for cutting stickers. They're less likely to get the gooey, uh, sticky part stuck to the scissors. So I'm just finding any remaining little bits of green. So there's a little bit right there. And there's also a bit in the W as well that I'm not sure if I can see that yet, but yeah, right there. So there's some right there that I'm pointing to. I'm going to have to cut out more of those whales. So bear with me while I cut those out. I do like to show my full process, which is why I included the part of the beginning with my scan and cut. And I'm including all of this cutting out just so you get a sense of how long it takes a person to do a page like this. It's, it takes four times 40, 40 minutes. <laughs> this is a longer process video. Most of my process videos, even when they're sped up to four times the speed, they end up being about half an hour long, maybe 35 minutes. Uh, this one is longer because it's actually two spreads. It's, I, I'm considering it a double page, but it's sort of like two spreads. The second spread is super easy and fast. And so uh, you'll get to see that at the end. Now, before I do the outlining here, I just wanted to experiment. I have two pens that are the same color. This is my new favorite journaling and outlining pen. It's a Faber-Castell Pit Pen, which I've used these in black for many, many years, but now I have some in colors, and this color is called Indenthrene Blue 247, and it is gorgeous. It looks like purple on the barrel of the pen, but it's like a nice dark almost like an indigo blue type of color I really really love it and where this page is all watery I thought it would be better to outline in this blue color as opposed to black which I usually outline in now the reason I'm outlining is that it just kind of adds a bit of containment to these letters particularly where, and here's where I wish I had moved that W over even a little bit more because it's a little bit squished compared to all the other letters are spread out. But anyhow, I'm outlining because it does contain these letters. Where many of the stickers have white borders on them, there's quite a bit of white inside of these cutouts. And whenever the white is right against the edge, it, it sort of almost looks like it bleeds into the white background. And by outlining these letters, what I'm doing is just containing the letters and giving them a little bit more definition than they would have if I didn't outline them. Normally, when I'm outlining, I always suggest that people hold your wrist straight and move your arm. But where I'm outlining on an intricate die cut piece, uh, I am often using my wrist here to, to outline and that's not optimal, but, uh, but I'd rather not accidentally um, break or, or um, kind of rip or tear at these uh, die cut letters. And I love how that E at the very end looks so much like a whale. I just love it. Now these are the little bits that go inside of the A and inside of the E and I just outlined them in case I decide to use them but I'm 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 uh I'm leaning towards not using them and spoiler alert I'm not going to use them. It just didn't add I kind of experimented with putting them on there a couple of times. See right there and right there. Uh, it, you know, it looks fine, but it doesn't add that much. And I kind of like how blocky it looks without them there. So I'm just going to leave them off. So I'm just using my ATG here to 
put some adhesive all around this title. I thought about popping this up off the page so that I'd have a bit of definition and some shadows showing between those letters. Uh, but I decided that I would probably end up seeing too much of the green background if I did that. I think if I had more stickers and was able to do a good solid collage across the edge, I would have popped it up, but I, I like it like this. Look at that, it's so fun. When I attach this, I actually attached it a wee bit higher than it should be. Uh, and so there's a little, a couple of places where the green is showing, but that's okay. So I actually stopped the video here and went and did some other things. And uh, then I'm gonna come back. See, I'm, I'm deciding again. I'm gonna come back later on the same day. Here, here's the new footage. So I went and had some breakfast and got myself a coffee and printed up some photos. And so I have a bunch of photos here and I have to decide which ones I'm going to use. I definitely want those two photos of the tail because uh, she spent the, the, we saw multiple whales um, and, and a few of them spent quite a bit of time slapping their tails on the water surface. And I definitely wanted to get that. I also wanted to include one of these photos that includes a little bit from the boat, just because it gives context and shows just how close the whales were to our boat. Whereas the other ones, you know, like that could have been zoomed in on a telephoto lens or something. It doesn't, it doesn't give quite the, uh, quite the context that I was looking for. So I've settled on these four photos of the whale watching and then I also have the photo of us. And so this is the point at which I'm deciding, okay, well, let's do two pages here. Maybe a double spread or maybe two pages that just kind of coordinate or work well together. I hadn't quite decided. Uh, I'm, I'd like to kind of arrange this such that I've got some horizontal lines across the page here. And so what I was thinking is that I could include two of the photos at the full four by six size and then two of them I'd cut down and uh, that would give me a bit more white space both above and below those photos. Now I thought I'd take a look at my summer scrapbooking supplies just to see what I have here for patterned papers or embellishments that I might want to use. My thought here is that I actually don't want to use too many embellishments because the 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 title is is the main embellishment and the main dec decoration on this page. So I'm just looking through my my summer supplies here. I have a collection from Photoplay and I also have the bright side collection and the pool side collection, both from Fancy Pants. And I have old, this is old supplies here from Shoreline Collection from American Crafts. Boy, these are very old, but I love them. They're one of my favorite summer collections. So now that I rooted through everything, everything is upside down in that like the flat things are on top and the bulky things are on bottom. So I just have to move everything back into the right order before I put it all away. So bear with me while I do that but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to use any of those embellishments, but I love that wavy paper from the bright side collection. That, that swirly paper, you'll see that when I do the second page, uh, that is from Scraptastic. But this paper here, this wavy paper was my very favorite that, that jumped out at me for this page. And it is from the pool side collection from Fancy Pants. Now I am going to fussy cut all of these little waves, little tiny scallops over and over and over again. I know it takes patience, but it is worth it because this paper is going to look so much better with a scalloped edge on it than a chopped off edge. So I'm just keeping on, keeping on. <laughs> and uh, what I'm doing here is you'll see I'm moving the paper, keeping my scissors relatively still, but I'm just kind of closing them to cut as I go. And it's the paper that I'm moving on that sweeping edge. And I'm just following the lines of the paper. 
you can just see to, to this perspective, it looks like it's just white and navy blue, but there's actually a really soft blue in there as well. And that's the line that I'm following is the soft blue line. I think that's going to look really great in between these two photos, but I'm going to need a little bit of white, the, these two strips of photos. I'm going to need a little bit of white strips between it just to give it some room to breathe. And so I thought I would put these two photos together. Um, I made it so that the so that the waterline and the and the horizon is the same so it almost looks like it's all one photo. I'm not trying to trick anybody into thinking it's one photo, but I think that it looks better to your brain when it's one continuous line. You can tell by the ripples in the water and stuff that it's two photos. I'm not trying to to pull fast one on anybody. <laughs> uh, this one would look even better if if um if the line could be, if the horizon could be lined up, but it couldn't be. And I just changed my angle there so that you could see how I was just kind of laying that, laying that first photo so that it was kind of butt up against the second one before I laid it down on the washi tape. So the washi tape on the back just allows me to handle these two strips of photos as if they were both one photo. They were each one photo. And I decided to put the thinner strip on the top because I like putting heavier things, like bulkier things, larger things on the bottom. And uh, you can see here how I have some strips of white paper. I'm going to cut this border strip down. Um, I'm actually going to cut it again just because I don't need that much of it. So I'm just cutting little bits of it. I cut that one off so that I wasn't going to get like, sh like sharp points. So I just have to cut it down a little bit more in such a way that I'm going to get the sharp points with the lighter blue color so that it's going to basically so that it's exactly the same as the other one. And I know I said that I share my whole process, but I'm actually going to speed this one up quite a bit more because it's so repetitive. So now I'm cutting at eight times the speed and uh, you can see how my thumb was getting in the way of me moving this paper aside. So I just started hooking my thumb under and that that helped a little bit. Oh, I wish I could cut this fast in real life. Wouldn't that be great? I wouldn't need a cutting machine. I could just, you know, cut out anything. Yeah, so that was worth the investment. It took maybe, I don't know, maybe five minutes to do both of them. It didn't take very long. It always feels like longer than it really is. So, you know, it's worth the effort. So I'm going to line up my my background paper here, like the like the overall layout, with my grid pa my grid mat that I work on, just to make sure that these are lining up properly. Now I do want to add some white, and I thought this is not the per this is the paper that I didn't use that had the whale cut out of it, and uh, it's not the perfect match as far as whites go, but there it's not going to be right up against the other white cardstock so it's all right it's all right that it's not a perfect match so now again I'm just using my grid mat to make sure that this photo is lined up properly with the letters in the word whale and I'm also going to use the grid mat to help me line up this I'm lining it up first on the left hand side and then on the right hand side and then I'm going to put a strip of white paper over top of that. This is just that that piece that I cut a minute ago. It had the, the second whale cut out on it, the one that I didn't use. And I'm making this so that you can see two of those little rows of waves. That gives me a bit of space here. And in this space between the first set of photos and the second set of photos, I'm going to put the word watching so that the overall spread says whale watching. And I hung on to this extra whale because it was my favorite of all the whale stickers. It has like beautiful waves around her and she's kind of just beautifully sitting there on top of the water. And so I wanted to include that and I thought that that would be a good way to uh, not need these letters. I, 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 in my mind, watching would spread the whole width of this, but see, I don't really love that. 
Uh, if I were to do that, I would put little dots or enamel dots or something in between each letter to make it look like it was spread out for a reason other than being spread out. But that just doesn't look great to me. So I'm actually going to go ahead and scooch those letters back together again. I just like my letters nestled in with each other. It's just a preference that I have. So that looks better. And I'm just using my sticker alignment tool to lay those out ahead of time so I can know how much space they're going to take. I measured how high those letters are. They're one inch high. And so I'm just gonna take a one inch strip of this paper. This is fish pattern paper that came from that same poolside collection from Fancy Pants. And I'm going to use that to fill the extra space on the other side of the word watching. So once I put the whale in place there, uh, I, I need to save some space for the whale. I was gonna put the whale in first and then I thought, ah, uh, I think that whale might have to layer over top of the photo below it as well. So I put it back on its sheet and now I'm going to put the, the letters in the word watching down and I'm just gonna use this little strip of paper here to fill this space. I don't wanna write beside the G like that because the whale is gonna have, have a little bit of space on the other side of that word over by the W. So I don't want anything crowded up to the G. And so now you can see how this is really coming together with a lot of horizontal lines. Oh, I love it. I'm not sure that there, there might be too much white up at the top and I don't know what I might do about that problem, but I don't know for sure that it is a problem yet. So I'm just waiting on that. I'll put the whole thing together and then I'll decide if there's too much white up there. So as I suspected, I did want to layer that whale over top of the photo below it. And now I'm going to adhere the second strip of waves right below this. And I don't want to cover up too much of that photo because that photo is there specifically because it shows the context of how close we were. I want to be able to see part of the boat that we were in. So there, that still shows at least a little bit of the boat that we were in. So there we go. And now I want there were two rows of the waves on the top. So I want two rows of the waves here. So I took that second strip that I cut from that same 12 by 12 piece that had the second whale word on it. I'll cover that up. And now this is much longer than 12 inches. So I just have to trim off the bottom parts. Just gonna use my trimmer for that. It's the easiest way to get a nice clean, crisp line. While I'm at it, I'll trim the other side of that. That was overhanging a little bit and look at that. That looks pretty good. And yes, there is a little bit more space up at the top than there is at the bottom, but that's okay. I, I kind of like it like that. If I knew I was going to be doing this with the, that word whale, I probably would have paid more attention to how it landed on the page that I cut it out of, uh, but this is fine. Now this is that piece of Scraptastic paper, Scraptastic Kit Club of course uh, it no longer exists but I used to design for them back in the day. I was on their design team and so I've got lots of their paper still hanging around and this is one of my all-time favorites. I feel like I've used this before, I might have had two pieces of it. And at first I was thinking that I would just do a separate, like coordinating like a sister page. So these would be two different layouts. But then I decided that this is just a great opportunity since I had more of this strip of this fish paper from the poolside collection. I thought this is a great opportunity for me to bring these two pages together and turn it into a double page layout. So obviously the second page is very different from the first page. The first page is very structured and linear. And then this page is like wild and crazy. And I kind of like that. I like the contrast. And then this one strip that, that spans from the first page into the second page, it's like the continuity between the two. Just using my T ruler there to make sure that those two strips of paper, because I didn't have enough of that strip to span the whole page. 
And now I would like to mat this photo on a piece of white cardstock and I didn't have any scraps so I had to go over to my stash and grab a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock. Gonna just mat it like that. I thought about double matting it with a blue, maybe a darker blue from the font or a brighter blue from the water and it's not matted perfectly. I thought about rematting it and said no, 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 I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, but I decided to go with just the white because there's plenty of white in that Scraptastic paper and it pulls in from the white on the other side of the page and it just, I, I just like how it looks with all the white. I felt like if I added blue to it, it would be too much. Like it would just take away from the white. I want this page, this side of the page to just be very light and airy and whimsical. So there we go. And then this page is not gonna really have much other than I'm going to put the location in it. And so I'm just going to have a look through my letter stickers here. These are those twilight thickers that I adore, but I'm really running low on most letters. And I was pretty sure I would not have enough A's to spell out Samana Bay. And I did not. And I thought about using different letter stickers, but I really liked the idea of a small-ish navy blue one. So I decided to pull out these Sassafras letter stickers. These are some of my all-time favorite letter stickers, and I have a whole bunch of them. So I am going to spell out the word Samina. I can't use capitals because this font only comes in, in lowercase, but that's okay. Again, I'm just using my thicker alignment tool, but you could use any thin, flexible ruler will work for this. And uh, yeah, some of my sets are more faded than others, so I just wanted to grab a Y that, that looked okay with the rest of the letters, or I had to pull from a second sheet for that. Uh, I'm just kind of playing around with where I might put it. I think I want it right over here, right justified and on top of the of the photo. I can't seem to get that Y. There, there we go. Now it's right. And I have these puffy whale stickers that are also from Four Bears uh, Sticker Club. And I just thought I'd pull one of those cute little puffy whale stickers and put it right beside Salmon a Bay. It's, it kind of is a bit of a throwback to the page beside it. And I thought I would do my journaling right along the waves. I love doing my journaling on the patterns of my background paper. It's one of my favorite things to do. I'm going to follow this lighter blue line and I am just kind of sketching out the spacing of my journaling ahead of time with pencil just so I know how much space I have or, or what kinds like how much information I can get onto these three lines that I have. I'm going to stop right around here and say okay I, I know I have enough room for for everything else that I want to say so I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to use that same pen pen again so this is again a fabric Castell pit pen and I'm just quickly writing here. I'll read you my journaling. It says, our excursion whale watching at Salmon Bay was a bucket list experience. I actually cried when I first saw the mama whale breach the surface with her baby in tow. Such magnificent creatures is what I ended up writing. Um, as you can see, it's not that bold. And so I thought about going over it with black and then I thought, no, I really like the look of this color. I just wish it was darker. So I'm just going to very slowly, very patiently go over the whole thing all over again. I actually didn't finish writing this journaling before I started going back over it. And I would say if you do this, just take your time and go nice and slow. And because it's my own handwriting, I have a bit of a muscle memory for making these letters. And so it's a little bit easier for me to trace my own handwriting than it would be for me to trace some other handwriting, right? So it's working out okay. 
and it's definitely darker, which is good. It's what I was hoping for. And uh, there is still some pencil showing in some places. That's why I'm going back and I'm erasing a little bit every here and there. Just making sure that it all is going to fit. And so I'll go through it once quickly just to kind of space out my letters. And then I'll go over it slowly. Just a little bit heavier. Going over it a little bit heavier also gives you a chance to fix up some of your letters in small ways. You can't do major fix ups, but you can do little, like you can fatten up a letter every here or there. Extend some lines just to, for interest. I like to extend some of the lines of my printing just to give it a bit of, uh, I don't know, like a, a unique to me look. And these India ink markers are fine for like you can erase over top of them and they're not going to smear and they don't even fade. They stay pretty, pretty nice and vivid, even with erasing. So in the interest of time, I did cut out a little bit of that journaling just, <laughs> just because it's pretty repetitive and it's not that interesting to watch me just go over my own pen writing for a second time but that's how that looks oh I really love it this page is so fun I have a little bit more to say I just want to say something about the whales themselves so the lower journaling is more about like my experience whale watching but then I wanted to just write something about the whales so what I'm writing here says these are the same whales from Nova Scotia the females come here each year to give birth and I just spaced that out such that it would fill the space the best that I could. And then like I did on the bottom, I'm just going to go over each of those letters very, very slowly and gradually. So I will cut that out as well. And so here I am just wrapping up the last of that journaling and then I'll put the two photos, the two sides of the layout together just so that you can see how they look. And before I share the photos, just a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen. So big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad free access to all my process videos and real time unedited versions of my videos, as well as a monthly live stream and behind the scenes videos of my room and my process. And thanks to you also for watching all the way to the end of this video. Take a look at these photos. I'm going to show you some close ups as well so that you can see some of the details details that might have been too far away for some of the filming of the process video so there oh look at those stickers they look so cool in the little holes of the word for of the letters for the word whale so thanks so much for watching I hope that you found this these two pages to be inspiring or to give you some motivation to scrapbook one of your recent or far off memories or stories take care and have a really great scrappy week